When I started my business in 2020, I was a single woman, had been divorced, had lost my job, I had very little self-worth, a lot of trauma. I started my business very, very nervously in 2020, like a lot of people did when COVID hit. I had postnatal depression, I had postnatal anxiety, a lot of women struggle with, you know, hormones and emotions and motherhood's so huge. You look at a woman who's expected to work, expected to run a house, expected to buy the food, cook the food, clean, wash, plan everybody's appointments, nourish themselves, nourish their children, hold their emotions, hold their children's emotions, and then look good, exercise, <laughs> manage their own physical, <laughs> emotional, mental, spiritual health. So we deserve to feel nourished and supported. I want to talk a little bit about generational trauma. It seems like a bit of a buzz. Mm. Our generation are cycle breakers. We're cycle breakers. We are the first generation in a very long time that is changing the way things operate. But people are very triggered when you break the mould and you create a life that's different. And I wanted to talk about miscarriage and loss. Mm. You talked about how that can be a great healing for mm. women that have experienced loss. Mm. When we have some type of trauma mm. or experience of loss mm. and there isn't anywhere to go, I think mm. the miscarriage is a really oh. standout time that mm. there is no support. Mm. Society teaches us to be men mm. and not to feel. But I think in answer to your question, Really excited to be joined by Kelly Moses today. She is a former teacher turned healer and you are going to hear about not only her transformation and journey and how, don't mind me, the word journey doesn't do it justice, but how over time she's evolved into this space. We talk a lot about generational trauma and what that is and what that means. I feel like it's a buzzword at the moment. And so really unpacking that, we talk about miscarriage, fertility, endometriosis, and how different or looking at it from a different perspective and a different way of healing can really be the missing ingredient for a lot of women. And we talk about how when we can step into our our true power as women and really our intuition and really drop into that how life just gets better. I am really excited for this episode so let's get into it. Kelly thank you so much for being here today. Before we get into the real nitty-gritty for those of you those of our listeners that don't actually know you I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey. How'd you get here because I feel like I don't even know the answer to that actually. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot here. Oh, it's, yeah it's huge. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Um, so I was I've always been deeply spiritual and intuitive but I was a primary school teacher for 17 years and a religious education coordinator assistant principal and then I moved into spirituality and running retreats for schools, which was beautiful and amazing. So I've always been deeply spiritual and connected well with helping people to, you know, in, in the Catholic system was finding God within themselves and now it's, you know, finding who we are. And right. We're, you know, helping women connect to themselves. But so I was doing that and then I fell pregnant with my beautiful son, Mason, 2016, had him. And I think, you know, like we hit motherhood and we deeply sit in who we are and what we're creating and what we're going to be leaving behind and what our legacy is and purpose. And I just knew that I didn't want to be in a role where I was away every, you know, second weekend and at work till eight at night. And, um, yeah, there's a piece there that I kind of can't talk about, but the universe pushed me out of the sure. role I was in. My, and motherhood changed And motherhood you. changed me. And yeah. I started my business very, very nervously in 2020, like a lot of people did when COVID hit. And I knew that I couldn't, he was getting older and I just didn't want to be, I was still teaching two days a week, but I just didn't want to be the mother that wasn't present for him. And there were a lot of women, I had a lot of trauma and I had been through an awful divorce and I'd been through a lot of hardship my own personal life growing up and then a lot of hardship with transitioning out of my career into starting my business and there was kind of nowhere for me to go yeah, as right. a mother and as a woman apart from going to see a psychologist, perhaps being medicated and waiting, you know, six to six months to see someone. There was nowhere for me to be emotionally supported. Mm. So I started the business, yeah, started my business in 2020. Wow. That's and I just knew that there was a need for mothers and women and children because after teaching for so many years too I was always the emotional advocate in schools for children who were you know anxious or struggling and the other teachers still kind of like we're here to teach but <laughs> meeting the emotional needs of the children is is everything um 
so yeah, I knew that there was a huge need for emotional support for women and children. And just holding space. Totally. And, you know, non-judgmental safe space for women to feel and be and 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 be heard and not feel judged and to be able to have a way to let it go. You know? I think that your point there is that there is a period of time where where do you go? Totally. Like there is a, there's a real there's yeah. a real gap there. Yeah. And who am I? And like I've just landed in motherhood. I don't know who I am anymore. Mm. And you know, I had postnatal depression. I had postnatal anxiety. A lot of women struggle with you know hormones and emotions. And motherhood's so huge. And so I created where I created what I needed. Yes. Which is what we all do, mm, mm, I think, mm. at some point, which mm-hmm. is important. And I think we to, the saying to teach is to learn twice. Mm, mm-hmm. um, I guess a lot of what you're doing is probably still rehashing and you're still growing and you're still mm-hmm. learning through mm-hmm. other people's. I, I have mm-hmm. never forget one time having this patient came in. I was like, she had no idea that she was the patient I needed to mm-hmm. sit with that day. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying to my therapist, mm-hmm. is that even a thing? Mm-hmm. Like- totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. We magnetise and draw into the people, into our energetic field and our work that, you know, heal us as well. So me, it's been so healing for me to help women move through struggles and adversity and trauma and relationship journeys and career journeys and losing themselves in motherhood and finding themselves mm. again. And, you know, it's just such a huge hold. Being it really is. I want to talk a lot about mums, especially today, because I really feel like something that I've noticed uh, in the work that I do is that women really still struggle to put themselves Mm. first. And how do we have this conversation that maybe can help the penny drop Mm -hmm. that if you don't, it's actually a disservice Mm -hmm. to everyone around you. Yet I still, I feel like we hear that, Mm -hmm. but we still don't know how Mm. to practice it. Hearing it. And embodying it are two different things. So a lot of the work I do with women is to help them let go of the cognitive, subconscious stories and narratives that we're holding that play out in our behaviour and actions. Which, So when we, we hear it and we know it and we say, okay, I understand that, but women will still play out the patterning and the conditioning and, you know, it's like falling back into the... And is it because it's what we've seen our mothers potentially do? Yes. A lot of it is based on what we've witnessed. You know, zero to seven children are sponges. We know this. They absorb Mm. everything. They don't learn through word. They learn through action. And our generation of women, well, you know, we watched our mothers running around, pouring into everybody else. You know, my own mother had four children, ran a house. Sometimes I wonder whether our perception of that is actually not like I, I like to think my mum was a little bit smarter. Mm, mm. Sometimes I wonder is it my perception as a child mm. watching my mum do mm. everything and mm. be everything, mm. but somehow she had it figured mm. out in the background. I don't know. It's just something yeah. that I play with sometimes. I but think, we've still seen that yeah. and then emulated that. Mm. I to think some the degree. perception's yeah an interesting point. You know what we witness as children, but whether it's it's still what we take on. You know, like our generation of the mothers, of, like my own mum, and they'd never really had permission to Mm. say, okay, everybody, I'm really exhausted. I'm going to go away for a night and stay in a hotel. Or I'm really exhausted. I'm going to book a day spa. Or they just had to keep going. It's so true. But then I wonder, did they have some secret way of doing it underneath that we don't even know about? I don't know. Well, I feel like they probably would have told us by now. (laughs) if if, If you look at it, like, you know, they used to tie women up and force them to orgasm, mm. doctors historically, because or they'd call them crazy. Yeah. And after that, women were, you know, drugged. Mm. There was a massive generation of women who were just put on antidepressants because they were miserable and not coping. And I think mostly women have been suppressed and have just thought, this is my life, I mm. have to keep going. It's my duty as a mother and as a wife and as a woman to just put my needs aside and make sure everything's done, carry yeah. the mental load, carry the physical load. Yeah, and we still see it and it's mm, happening mm, mm, in front of our eyes mm. every day. I see pa- patients all the time who say that. Yeah, and depleted. Yeah. And it's easy, to, it's easy to fall into that cycle, you know, when you have to hold, like you look at a woman who's expected to work, expected to run a house, expected to buy the food, cook the food, clean, wash, plan everybody's appointments, yeah. nourish themselves, nourish their children, hold their emotions, hold their children's emotions and then look good, exercise, yeah. manage their own physical, <laughs> emotional, mental, spiritual health, you know. No wonder we're exhausted. And no wonder everybody's exhausted and depleted. <laughs> but I think in answer to your question, knowing that you need a break and then 
being able to actually verbalize that, carry your worth, know that you're worthy of that and, and implementing that and actually making it happen are two different very things. Mm. So a lot of the work I do is to help women let go of the stories and the conditioning that's blocking them from being able to pour into themselves. Amazing. And most of that's guilt. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> mm. Well, that was my very first mm. experience of doing any type of inner work was about the guilt that mm. I had, mm. which came out of nowhere, which mm. wasn't even about anything, mm. but it was a story mm. that's for another mm. time. Mm. Um, I want to talk a little bit about generational trauma. It seems like a bit of a buzz mm. at the moment, the words generational trauma. For those that don't know what that is, mm. what mm. is generational trauma mm. and why are we talking about it all mm. of a sudden? Our generation are cycle breakers. We're cycle breakers. We are the first generation in a very long time that is changing the way things operate. So, you know, even the fact that a lot of us will say to our children, you know, how are you feeling? Whereas our generation was right. like, sit down, be quiet, you know. Spoke, spoken, don't speak <laughs> yeah. unless spoken to. Yeah, I children should be line. seen and not heard. Yes. Mummy and daddy busy, go yes. away, you yeah. know. So our, our generation are cycle breakers and generational trauma you know, there's there's so many different ways to look at it, but the work that I do is that we hold ancestral lineage imprinting and generational trauma around our cervix. So that's a way to clear it with womb spiral, but it's basically breaking the patterns and the conditioning and the structures and the way that you were brought up and the way that you were believed that you should be showing up as a woman, as a mother. You know, it can go move from things from the way we raise our own children. A lot of, you know, women are raising their children different to how they were raised. Mm. So that's a way we're breaking generational trauma. Conditioning around wealth, money, you know, women were the men's were the providers and they were to stay at home, be stay at home mum. So that's a way, you know, a lot of women, um, you know, women who were raised with well, girls, boys that were raised with abusive parents and were believed that they stay in that marriage until you know, the end of time to make sure that that's the right thing to do for the children. So a lot of people these days are realising that, you know, you can have a healthy family unit and not live together and be separated and still meet the needs of the children emotionally and create safe and space, safety and peace. Um, yeah, and then there's, you know, the sexual trauma that a lot of people have endured in childhood. But I think basically it's, it's when you get to a point in your life where you say, I don't want my children to experience what I experienced and I don't want to become my mother. Right. You know, I don't want to continue to live a life where I, you know, a life by default where I feel like I should do this and I should stay with my husband and I should, you know, run the house and not pour into myself or I should instead of looking at what patterning is playing out and getting curious about how to change your life. It can be very confronting when you make those decisions mm. and how everybody else responds mm -hmm. to the changes that you start to make. So confronting. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge piece. I know that when I started um, travelling a lot for work and working a lot more and my husband started to step into the day-to-day -day role, everyone was traumatised mm. except for us. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I shouldn't say maybe traumatised, mm, but they were mm, very concerned mm, mm. about what that looked like mm. for us. Was mm. I okay? Was mm. he okay? It's like mm. everyone's really happy mm. and at the end of the day, so long as the kids totally. are with someone that loves them 24-7, Mm. Um, but it was very interesting. Mm. We, had a, we had a lot of people say to us, is mm. everyone okay? <laughs> You're like, everybody's I'm like, great. I'm living my best life over here. <laughs> yeah. and, he's, and my husband's a real homebody. Mm. So he was actually mm. doing exactly mm. what he wanted to be doing. Yeah. Um, so it's very interesting, mm. though. People were very triggered mm. by watching mm. the circumstances. Mm. 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 People are very... You know, like I, I do a lot of work around dogma and helping people like create their lives by design and create what lights them up and how their life wants to feel. But people are very triggered when you break the mould and you create a life that's different, you know, and especially when we look at masculine and feminine mm. archetypal work, like for, for him to be at oh, home yeah. with the children, nourishing, nurturing, it's like, well, and for you to be out making money, it brings up a lot for people around what people should, what what the traditional gender roles are, what they mm. should be doing, but then that again is based on their own conditioning and their own limiting beliefs around family and structure. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people have stories, and their stories don't necessarily serve them, but women more than anyone have so many stories. Mm. And most of them aren't real when we start to delve, like deepen and delve into the subconscious mind and most of them aren't serving them. 
I think that's such an important point that most of them aren't mm. real. No, they're not but real. But they feel real. They feel real because they believe So them. how do we unpack that? So just because we have a belief or a system or a structure of beliefs doesn't mean that they're real and it doesn't mean that they're serving you. So the work that I do is to help women work with their subconscious narratives and their subconscious belief systems. So even with fear, um, I take women th through a process called the spiral, which is an eight-week journey of letting go of limiting beliefs and it's it's like an energetic clear-up, raises your vibration, helps you to get out of your own way. It's amazing. But even with fear, you know, the way that we are showing up and responding to fear, when we do clearing around it and reframe it and, and dive into the deep patterns around your childhood when fear was anchored in and what the experience was, when we reframe it, it's like what would change if you could feel the fear and do it anyway, when we do clearing around it, your whole relationship and response and reaction to fear will change. So the way we're showing up isn't necessarily the way we have to show up. If we're brave enough to do the deep work and to look at our own conditioning. For example, when I started my business in 2020, I was a single woman, had a two-year-old boy, had been divorced, had lost my job, was stuck, was so paced under depression, post under anxiety, I had very little self-worth, a lot of trauma, was stuck. And when I went through the spiral, at the end, when we cleared me to purpose, it was like, what would change if you could connect to your purpose? And I said, well, I'd start a business. I'm a healer. I'm a spiritual woman. I'm like, I'm here to help women. I know what I'm here to do. And if I hadn't have gone through that journey to let go of my conditioning and connect to my purpose, I would have stayed stuck. You wouldn't be doing what you're I wouldn't doing be now. here right now with mm. you because I would have been at home saying, telling myself the story that I'm not good enough, no one wants to work with me. Or that it's not appropriate. Yeah, it's not going to work. People think I'm silly. Yeah. And then when I stepped into my healer identity, we had to take her through the spiral and deconstruct her because she was worried that the Catholic Church would fire her, like sue her, light her on fire, burn me, take my child. What would Mason's school mums think? Would they think I was crazy? Would my own family think I was crazy if I said I have a gift? You know, what would society, how would I be perceived? So then I had to deconstruct all of those stories. But the stories aren't real. And right. I've proved that through my own expansion and evolution. And now I think it's so beautiful because when I tell other women about my story, they can see the growth that I've had. And when you stepped into mm. the, new, the, the next mm. version of you, mm. Mm. what was the reaction of the other people? That yeah. The stories that you uh, had or were they, were they the true stories or was it that you were stronger and you were like, oh, no. I um, had a few, like, moments with old friends who I think kind of... They were old friends. Yeah. We, the <laughs> friendships evolved pretty quickly right. and changed a lot but I think they kind of, you know, yeah, were a little bit confused. But, look, most everybody around me, like you know even my mum yeah everything right? just works out mum mm. like the dentist is like my mother's so proud of you she, she doesn't know what you do but she's so <laughs> proud of you she doesn't understand it but she's so proud of you but like yeah everybody around you you know I've made beautiful friendships beautiful. and everybody's evolved but more importantly you keep evolving and growing and each new version that I meet of myself has stories and that's normal but I think when we're brave enough to let the stories and the conditioning go that's when we can create a reality that serves us yeah and their life by design instead of being stuck. You were talking earlier before we started recording um, about the spiral and I wanted to talk about miscarriage and loss mm, because mm. I think I read somewhere you talked about how that can be a great healing for mm. women that have experienced loss. Mm, mm. And again, just to the point before about where do women go mm. when we have some type of trauma mm. or experience of loss mm. and there isn't anywhere to go. I think mm. miscarriage is a really... Oh. Um, standout time that there is no support. Mm, mm. I'd love to hear a little bit about how the spiral helps women mm. that have experienced a loss because, I mean, it's not necessarily going to be the first thing that they dive into, but I do think that there's there's so much fear that's associated with that moving forward. Mm, mm. Um, can you talk a little mm, bit more mm. about that? So womb spiral, there's the spiral and then Ah, there's spiral. two, right. So the spiral is... A journey to let go of limiting beliefs. It's more of a cognitive journey. It's more of your, you know, if you're stuck, getting you out of your own way. So that would be helpful in terms of letting go of, you know, grief and guilt. And that would be helpful for a woman who just generally feels stuck in her life and doesn't know where she's going or what she's creating. It helps to bring you into your power, speak your truth, you know, love yourself, open your heart, get clarity around your vision. The spiral's phenomenal. 
in terms of fertility, miscarriage, loss, you know, wanting to fall pregnant, um, womb spiral is a beautiful journey that I take women through. The most important piece there is that, you know, again, when a woman has miscarried, just to be able to be held safely and be able to express and feel into the emotion. You know, there's nowhere women don't, uh, we're not taught to create space for us to feel and we are such emotional beings. So womb spiral is phenomenal but a lot of the work is kind of in clearing. As we move through the gates, we're able to clear, you know, our, ourselves like gate two is all around nurture. It's our G-spot, it's our overflow. So when we clear what's blocking a woman from nurture, she's able to nurture herself more deeply. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's a feminine embodiment journey. We clear the womb, we clear the cervix, we help you to let go from, from an embodiment perspective of the things that are holding you back. I'm feeling like this would also be something amazing for women who are experiencing endometriosis, which Definitely. is such a, whilst it's a physical presentation, mm. I think there's so much emotion mm. tied up mm. for women Definitely. and stuck emotions when it comes to. Definitely. And birth trauma. Mm. Like I went, I've been through the spiral three times and mm. womb spiral three times, but birth trauma as well, like our wombs hold so much that we, when we're not able to process something, our womb holds it for us. So, yeah, it's a really it's a really beautiful way to help you emotionally and spiritually let go and to birth a new version of you mm -hmm. and to create. So I had a client in the UK who had was not able to conceive over a period of 10 years and went through a womb spiral and she's conceived and had a beautiful, healthy baby boy. Amazing. Um, and, again, like setting that intention, you know, for that that is your intention to conceive or to let go of the trauma or whatnot. I think a lot of women at that point in time are very scared to set an intention mm. about something that's mm. not coming for them. Definitely, yeah, definitely. With well, that's the piece. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, this journey is going to help me to conceive but this journey is going to help me to feel, feel supported mm -hmm. and to let go of some of the trauma and to start to come back into my body and start but to open up again. why is it so important again. to lean into the feeling rather than the outcome? Because the feeling for me, is where we manifest from. Right. Because we're women. We're watery beings. Mm -hmm. We're emotional beings. We're not cognitive. We're not men. We're not logical. So we need to be able to feel into how we're feeling about it, you know. And by doing so, I think part of it, one of the things I think is the hardest when it comes, especially to fertility, mm. is the surrender of the process. Oh, it's so hard. And, and especially it's, you know, especially women that have been mm. through the process and are still five years mm. later hearing mm. this mm. and mm. there's going to be someone listening to this going mm. shut up mm. totally. you know right you don't totally. understand me totally. um, and I don't because I've but I've mm. helped thousands of mm. women in this position and I understand mm. what I see in front mm. of me and just how mm. um, there's so many versions of women they're either closed shut off mm. Um, but really aren't. Mm. Um, and I think part of the surrender is actually leaning into the feeling. Definitely. And, you know, like when we're able to be held and soften and step into our feminine energy and open, we can receive. Right. And it sounds so woo-woo, but surrendering isn't a mental concept. Like if you say to a woman who's been on a, like I've miscarried, you know, and I've had a fertility journey myself mm -hmm. so to be like you need to surrender I get it it's bullshit you're like go away I want a baby in my belly I want my baby in my arms what are you talking about but when we do this work and you can start to feel what surrender feels like in your body you can start to feel like what trust feels like in your body and you can start to make decisions from your body rather than your mind it helps and I think it also helps to anchor in that unwavering belief that this is going to happen. Yeah. I can't control how. Yeah, definitely. I just have to surrender Trust to in the, the process. process. And I think as well... I can't sit here and force myself to ovulate at the right time. Totally. Stars to line up in the sky. I think as well, you know, fertility and conception is, is such a journey, but womb spiral deconstructs the way we create. So even with birth in a business, creating a business, creating new versions of you... We take you down to creation point and it, it is, look, it's woo-woo, you know, it's woo-woo. I'm not going to lie, it's woo-woo. But when you hit that point when you've done all the physical things and you've worked with the acupuncture and you've worked with the naturopath and you've worked with the IVF people mm. and you are there, energetic and emotional things and spiritual things and our stories and our conditioning, when we clear those things, it can help you so much because we hold it in our body. Well, I think it's also creating space totally. to, for what you want to come in. Definitely. But 
the more we, yeah, the more we let go of, the more we can create. But, you know, I've worked with women who have had endo and awful periods and heavy periods and clots and, you know, being able to release the energetic and emotional blocks around that. They've said, you know, my periods are lighter, they're more regular, that I'm not having as much pain with my bleed. Um, yeah, I think it's just important to have the space to release the emotion around, you know, even if you've miscarried, mm. that grief and that despair and that anxiety and being Society over Society teaches us to just suck it up and move on. Society teaches us to be men. It does, yes. Society teaches us to be men mm. and not to feel. You know, women come to me and they're like, I'm making these decisions, I'm writing a pros and a cons list. I'm like, you are not a man. <laughs> we need to drop you into your body. We need to teach you what trust feels like in your body. We need to help you to come out of your mind because otherwise you're just going to be an anxious overthinker mm. and feel into your body because you're a watery, beautiful, magical fucking woman, sorry, <laughs> who's meant to feel and not meant to be making logical decisions, you know. Like, yes, there's a place for logic, I understand that, but... We have to be connected to our bodies. So some might call that intuition. Totally. And again, is it that we've lost the yes. ability as women? Yeah, <laughs> She's already answered yes. it. She's like, yes, A, <laughs> yes. answer A. Yeah, because <laughs> society tells us like, you know, that we were the spiritual, the, uh, be man, be busy, run, you know, run businesses, burn yourself out, be depleted. Like we are not men. We are not men. We, women are oracles. Like I don't know if I can go into this on here, but. Of course you can. <laughs> like. Men used to drink the nectar from women right. to gain immortal life. Men would go to war and there would be temples for, for men to come back to and have sex with dakinis who would transmute their pain with their wombs. Like mm. women are phenomenal, magical oracles. We are water. We are goddesses. Like we, you know, you look at a woman, women can do anything if, they, if she believes that she can. But our intuition has been so shamed and our sexuality has been so shamed and women have been so suppressed mm. and conditioned to believe that we have to be a good girl and show up in this way and have our houses clean and keep everybody around us happy and not wear too much or show too much or be too much you know to be ex not to be in our fully embodied expressive feminine to be suppressed and be a good girl so, you know, when what we What a different world tie, it would be. Oh, imagine <laughs> like that my dream is to create a, a world where women and girls can be fully embodied and expressing their magic and in their intuition and trust themselves and be able to set boundaries and put themselves first and not, you know, not people please, not take on any roles or to be free of conditioning and to be able to create what they want. Yeah. Because that's why we become depressed and stuck because mm. we're living a life that's, you know... We think we should be doing. We get to create our own worlds, don't we? Mm. So, you know, mm. if you keep going and doing what you're doing, you mm. are creating mm. that mm. within mm. your world. Mm. I wonder if there's a standout time or, a, sorry, a standout woman that you've worked with mm. and you've watched an amazing transformation. Oh, so many. Is Everyone. There a, is there Everyone. a standout that you could share with us? Because I feel like the stories help women to connect with a me too oh, moment. So many Probably different should have prepared women. you for this question. Myself would be the biggest, like right. I'd feel the most comfortable speaking about because sure. of client, you know, yes. privacy Talk and everything. Yep. But, yeah, every woman I've worked with, there is not a woman that I have worked with that has not Can had Can you give an example of some transformations? Oh, just, you know, leaving relationships where they're miserable. Mm. Um, I work with a lot of women who are stuck in narcissistic uh, you know, marriages and they're, we've got narcissistic partners and they're, you know, the husband spent all the money and he's gambling and he's drinking and she's at home trying to, you know, make everybody happy and look after her children. And, you know, a lot of women get to the point where they're like, I'm going to choose me mm. and this isn't working for me and I'm going to start to pour into me and create healthy boundaries and a healthy reality for my children. I've worked with women who have had so much sexual trauma in the past that they haven't been over to date, let alone trust themselves to open, let alone to have sex with anybody, who have met men and had beautiful, healthy relationships, mm. met women who couldn't conceive for over 10 years and have worked with me and had conceived healthy, beautiful babies. I've worked with women who have been in businesses and have been bullied and harassed and are stuck and feel who you know have put on so much weight and hate their lives and are depressed and are on medication. So many women are on medication and they work with me and come off it, um, create healthy businesses, start to believe in themselves, come into their power, know their worth, create businesses, create abundance. Anything's possible. Like honestly, there's 
I've had women come to me with health issues that they've been stuck with and we've been able to do clearing and help them feel into the potentiality of, you know, letting go or moving forward through that. Car accident, like there's nothing really... When we believe differently, we show up differently, we create differently. And for me, like I'm the best, my journey, yeah. When I had Mason, I would drink a bottle of wine every night in the bath on antidepressants, so mm. post postnatal depression, post postnatal anxiety. Dad had died. I'd been in, I can't talk about it in detail, but I've been in like a marriage that was soul destroying mm. and I got out of it mm. and I'd miscarried at 11 weeks in that marriage and I, yeah, that ended and I fell pregnant, died, was praying, <laughs> sit in chapels and was praying to become a mum and thought that that was over for me and, um, yeah, conceived Mason and then even when I had him I was just stuck in my trauma. I wasn't showing up for him, I wasn't showing up for me, I was numbing, I was stuck and, yeah, I started this work, left teaching, believed in myself, started my business and now I have the most beautiful life and the most like you and mm. <laughs> beautiful Marcia and Zoe Marshall and David Minnie and it's all these amazing phenomenal people who are expanders for me who have seen me and felt me and connected with me and supported me in my business and yeah I have so many beautiful clients. I work three days a week and more importantly than than money, I know in my heart that I am helping. I'm gonna cry but I'm helping so many women who who felt stuck and alone and felt like they couldn't get out of how their lives were, mm. you know. And when I became a single mum, I moved in with my mum and um, there was a day I was crying in the shower on the floor at her house and she came in she's like, you've ruined your whole life, you've got no job, you've got because her conditioning, you've got no man, this little boy's never going to have anything, you're never going to have anything, you're going to have to work two jobs, Kelly, like life's going to be horrible for you. And after that day, I just made myself a promise that that would not be my reality and that any woman that believed that as truth, I would change. I was going to say you didn't believe it. No, mm. I didn't believe mm. it. And Which I is all knew. it takes and I think now I'm crying yeah. too. Um, <laughs> I didn't believe it. I think also it's for the woman that's listening going, well, where do I even like begin? I think it starts with just being curious Definitely. as to something being different. Definitely. And challenging your limiting beliefs. Mm. Like I do a lot of wealth work with women around mm. money because – a man starts a business and he's like, it's going to turn over a mill. Women starts right. a business, we, we say, will they like me? Yeah. It, am I enough? Will it work? What will people think of me? Mm, I think that's the biggest one. What will people yeah. think of will me? Will they judge me? Will people talk about me? Yeah. Like what will people Probably. say? But the piece is, that, yeah, they're going to talk about you. But <laughs> condi their conditions, <laughs> their, 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 their opinions aren't even real anyway because they're so heavily conditioned. Right. So they're just talking about you but it's not the real anyway. The thing that I find funny is I think that we think all of these things but people are more into themselves than what they Definitely. are about anyone else. Anyway. No one's thinking about anybody else. <laughs> I Everybody's all so the, tired and busy. <laughs> I say it all the time. Like, people actually don't care Definitely. about you. They just think about Definitely. themselves. I say this to women actually when they fall, first fall pregnant and they're like, what are people going to think of me when I'm not holding a glass of wine in my hand? I said, people no don't care. Notice, actually, no. notice. No. If you just stood there and held it, no one yeah. would actually notice. And They're our more into relationship themselves. with everyone around us is based on our relationship with ourselves. Right. So when we do the inner work, the way that we perceive people are believing about us changes anyway. But with the limiting belief stuff, write down a really good tip is to begin. And I started with this with wealth alchemy is a new thing I'm birthing at the moment to help women because they let go of, you know, ex-husbands or dads or mums, you know, like the stories women hold a while but the stories that we hold around money have the most – the client, the stories they tell me like, oh, I can't – I can't spend it on myself because, you know, if I do then there's something bad will happen or I can't, you know, yeah, just wild, wild stories that we have around money from conditioning. But write down what you believe about something and go through with a highlighter – and just get curious around which beliefs I talk about, like feeling sticky, and you'll know because mm. you'll read it in your body, your mind, you'll be like, oh, that's it's interesting that I believe that. Mm. And just start to get curious and challenge your belief systems because it's just curiosity and observing, isn't yeah. it? It's observation. Yeah, and listening to your language is mm. so important, you know. Yeah. I still, every day, you know, even with my son, like, you know, I hope I can do You can do it, you know. Like the language right. we use is so important, really the positive is. reframes. Um, it really, really is. I have one more question for you. Mm. Is it ever too late to address any of this? Never, never, never. Right. Not There's while your heart's beating. <laughs> right. Like if, you, if you, you know, yeah, if you look at your life, you're never too old and you're never stuck. Mm. 
And even then, you know, there's people in your, because again, not doing it for other people, but also there are other people that will see your example that are really important. I think Mm -hmm. it's so important for us as women as well, not only to step into our, you know, and own who we are, but the, um, it's not a responsibility, but at the same time, I feel like it kind of is to be the example for the next generation, to be the example for the loved ones. I constantly am asked, how do I get my mum to change? How do Mm. I get my daughter to change? Mm. And I'm like, you don't. Well, You just be the example. The piece is with that is, like I said, all of our relationships are a mirror. So many women, when they do the work with me, they're like, oh, my husband's so different. (laughs) Oh, my mum, my relationship with my mum is so different. My children are listening to me. They're so different. So when we start to clear up our triggers and our wounds and our conditioning, the way we show up changes, but we don't really realise. And then all of our relationships change. Yeah. So, you know, like... It makes so much sense that our internal perception is projection, our internal world creates our external reality. And, like, that's not woo-woo, that's facts. We know that from health, you know. So when we start to do the internal work, your relationships will change. Yeah, women are like, oh, my husband's so much better. We're communicating better. He's listening. Like, he wants to help more. And I'm like, yeah, but you're also (laughs) not triggered and being able to communicate and ask for what you need Mm. without your, you know, ancestral stuff. Yeah. I do hope that that's what, if anyone hasn't heard anything, mm. that they hear exactly that, being mm. able to ask for what mm. you need mm. becomes mm. really important Definitely. when you actually do step into this Definitely. different version and of yourself. I feel like with me, for those that are listening that are like, she is so woo-woo, this is also woo-woo, I'm actually really human, you know. I, I'm, I have a bachelor in education, I have two master's degrees, I have a son, I have a house, I'm not... You know, sometimes when we work with spiritual people around this stuff, I feel like I feel like a big part of my purpose is to be that bridge between human and spirituality and to help women come back to themselves and their intuition and their bodies and to trust themselves. So it's not really that woo-woo because what we're working with is your mind and your body. And, and I think we've proven a thousand times over mm, that they're connected. Mm, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And, you know, I think, I think that, you know, you're with you for the rest of your life so you're worth investing in. Yeah, and you're worth, yeah, pouring into you. Like anything we create when we're resent- depleted, we resent. Anything we create when we're full, when our cup is full, we are abundant, we are pouring from our overflow. So we deserve to feel nourished and supported. Amazing. Well, thank you so thank much you. for chatting with me today. Thank you, beautiful. I know this is going to help so many so many women. Thank you. Gorgeous. And keep doing the work that you're doing. Thank you, my love. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. So good. Hey there, it's Nat Kringudis, host of the Wellness Collective podcast. I know how important it is to have a safe space for women's health. And that's why we created NK The Membership, an online sanctuary where you can access expert guidance and support right from home. Get early access to monthly masterclasses, unlimited access to our entire catalogue and practical resources to achieve hormone harmony. Plus, enjoy a 20% discount on supplements and join my monthly live Q&A sessions. Join our community of like-minded women and wellness experts to revolutionise your health one topic at a time. Visit our website and sign up now. It's legit Netflix for hormones.